back to shower math and today we're gonna be doing a practice test a practice test number one for the SAT so in this video we have both the calculator and non-calculator section so the non calc and the calc on the description below I uploaded the uh, the paper so you can try it you can download the paper do it in 25 minutes for the non calc and then 55 minutes for the calculator section so you can assess how much score you could get okay for the first question we just want to find x given that k is equal to 3 so let's just rewrite it as minus 1 3 is equals to since k over here is equivalent to 3 then replace it then all we have to do is to solve for x the first step would be bringing 3 to this side so it means times by 3 so this is going to be out to x minus 1 is equals to 9 then you add 1 to both sides therefore x is equals to 10 For the second question, what we have to do is to add uh, to find the sum, which means we need to add them. When you're adding i, i is a, is a complex number over here. It's just like a normal variables, just like an x. So first combine 7 and negative 8, which is negative 1. And then combine the 3i and 9i, just like an x. It's just like having 3x plus... 9x which is 12x but in this case we have i plus 12i this question all we need to do is to make an expression based on this statement so read this one carefully and it says here that Armand sent m text messages for five hours so in total that's going to be five times m which is 5m plus for Tyrone Send P text messages for four hours, so that's going to be four P. So our answer is letter C. This question says here that Kathy is fixing a phone. This is the equation for the number of phones that is left after D days. So P is equals to 108 minus 23D. First, let's just analyze the concept. This is actually a linear equation where it composes of the slope, the y-intercept. When you see y-intercept, that is actually the fixed or initial. There are so many words that you could use here, but most commonly these two. So in our case here, the 23 over here, since that is the one next to the variable, this is the variable, which is similar to the x, 23 is what we call the slope the rate of change and 108 is the fixed for the initial which means 108 must be the initial number of phones that she has to start uh, every week to fix and that's gonna be letter B over here Kathy st starts each week with 108 phones to fix which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? So we're just going to combine like terms in here. But first, there is a negative on the center over here, which means it has to be distributed to all the numbers to the right side. Because there is a negative 1 over here. That negative 1 will multiply these numbers to the right side. This number and the, these terms, the first... Uh, the first terms over here, all you have to do is to copy them. You don't need to do anything about it. You can just leave it there. You're just going to have to simplify the one on the right side. The right side of the negative. So let's start on the first one. So negative times negative, that's going to be plus x squared y. Negative times 3xy squared is minus 3xy squared. The negative minus 3y squared is plus y squared. The next thing that we're going to do is just to combine like terms. This one combined to this. 
So that's going to be 2x squared y. If you look at the option, a and b must be eliminated. So we only have c and d to choose from. Next, we're going to combine the y to the y. But as you can see, 1 is negative, 1 is positive, so they will cancel out. So there should be no y in our options. And that's why letter D will be eliminated because it still contains a y squared. So by process of elimination, you can see that the answer is C. You don't even need to continue. But if you want to continue, we can still continue. So 5x y squared combined to this, which is plus x y squared. And that is still letter C. For this question, there is an equation to estimate the height of a boy from ages 2 to 5. The question is, what is the estimated increase each year? So the height each year. Again, this equation is y is equal to mx plus b, or basically an equation of a line, where m is what we call the slope or the rate of change, while b is the initial or fixed, which is also the y-intercept. And since they're asking for what is the estimated increase on the uh, boy's height each year, it's just basically the slope. And that is 3. Because if you look at it, every time you add an extra a, if a increases by 1, the height is basically increases by 3. Because initially it is 28.6. And then you just keep on adding an extra 3 every time uh, we add an extra a. So that is letter a. For number 7, before we start this question, let's just have a little bit of an example. For example, um, I have a over b, x is equal to y. So it's just, for example, I want to find the, um, the x. So it means I'm going to have to get rid of this a minus a over b. So I have to bring it to the other side. And how are we going to bring it to the other side? All we have to do is to multiply it by its reciprocal. And you shall do it on the same side also. Therefore, B is cancelled, A is cancelled. The only thing left is 1x or x is equals to y, B over A. So as you can see, if you want to find x, all you have to do is to bring A over B to the other side and just flip it. And you should just apply the same concept in here. So since you want to find P, that is actually, imagine this is just like A and this is B. So if you want to find P, just bring b over here, over a. So b is 1 plus r, this is b. So just look at the option. That's b. And this one over here is a. So your answer must be letter b. Number 8, we are given an equation over here, and we just need to find the value of 4b or a. So. Let's have an example for fraction. For example, you have 1 half. 1 half is actually equivalent to 5 over 10. Okay. So since this is a true statement, I can reverse it, which means I will reciprocate this. So I'll flip this to over 1. That would still be equal to 10 over 5. Because if you simplify it, it's going to be 2 is equal to 2. It means you can always do that as long as you have a single fraction on the left side and another fraction on the right side of an equal sign. So let's apply the same rule in here. So for this one, a over b is equivalent to 2 over 1. So we can reciprocate them. So b over a is equivalent to 1 over 2. But since we want 4 b over a, it means that the left side must be multiplied by 4. Then the right side must also be multiplied by 4. So if you multiply 4 and this, you are going to get 4b over a is equivalent to 
half of a 4 is equivalent to 2. Or 1 half times 4 over 1, 1 times 4, 4. 2 times 1, 2. Simplified, it's 2. That's why the answer is 2. Number 9, we have system of equations and we need to find the solution. So, uh, for this one, the easiest way to do it, it would probably be elimination. But I will also teach you how to do substitution and plug-in method. So let's start with uh, elimination. You say elimination, it means you need to eliminate either the x or y. But first, make sure that the x and y's are properly aligned. It means this one, we need to flip one of them in order for the x to be on top of x and y to be on top of y. So I would just flip the x and y over here. So I will rewrite it. So 4y plus 3x is equal to negative 23. I'm going to rewrite the other equation over here. So 2y minus x is equal to negative 19. So if you look at the options over here, x's actually have different values, but for y, there are two y that are the same. So I would recommend you to find the x instead, because if you find the x, then that's it. You don't need to find for the y. So if we want to find x's in here, it means that for this one, the y must be multiplied by negative 2. Why negative 2? Because my objective is to make the y's the same so we can cancel them out. So I'm going to multiply the bottom part by negative 2. So this is going to be negative 4y plus 2x equals to 38. And then I'll just copy this down below. So 4y plus 3x is equals to negative 23. Then that will cancel out by just adding each terms. So this is going to be 5x and that's going to be 15. Divide by 5, divide by 5, x is equal to 3. So as you can see, that's the only one with x equals to 3. So we already have our answer. We can try some other um, breaking out. And I, we can actually try here substitution. When you see substitution, I'll show you what substitution is. Over here, we can actually make x the subject of the equation by bringing x to this side, 19 to this side. So it means x is equivalent to 2y plus 19. Since x is this expression, so we can just go here and replace the x. So it means 3 and then replace that x by 2y plus 19. So basically, this x over here will be replaced by this. plus or y is equivalent to negative 23. Then, we simplify it. 6y plus 57 plus 4y is equivalent to negative 23. Then we combine this two, and we are going to get an answer of 10y is equivalent to, we're going to bring 57 to the other side and that's going to be it's going to be negative 80 so we divide both sides by 10 and y is equivalent to negative 8 and since there, this is the only one with negative 8 have your answer in there so those are the two uh, ways you could do them there are so much ways but those are the most common ones. Okay, number 10. For the function g defined above, we need to find the g negative 4, given that g 4 is equal to 8. If you analyze the equation over here, gx is equivalent to a x squared plus 24. Now look at this x. If you replace that by negative 4 or by 4, Actually, it will give you the same answer, which is 16. Because negative 4 squared is 16 still. By the way, if you, if you try to put it on the calculator, which you can't, but if you want to check it, make sure you put a bracket. Because if you put it this way, you will actually get negative 16. 
on some calculators. So make sure you put the parentheses because we always have a positive when you square a number. So this one is also 16. So if that x squared is actually 16, therefore, both of them will give you an equation of a by 16 plus 24. So it means it will have the same answer and that's also going to be 8. For this one, they said that the price of the beef and chicken will be equal at some point. So after x weeks, because the prices of the uh, commodities in the market actually changes per week, per day. So, but eventually in this scenario, the beef and chicken will be equal at some point. That's why 2.35 plus 0.25x will eventually be equals to 1.75 plus 0.40x. So they're going to be equal at some point. So what I usually do is, if I see a decimals like this, I would recommend you guys to multiply them all by 100 in order to get rid of the decimals. And we can just get a whole number. So if you multiply them all by 100, so this is going to be 235. I'll put it on the left side. The other one will be plus 25x. So this one equals to multiply this one by 100, 175. Multiply this by 100 plus 40x. As you can see, all of them now are whole numbers. And then we can find the value of x. So I'm going to bring the, this x to the other side. So minus 25x minus 25x. So it's gone on the left side. 235 is the only thing left. And then that one will be copied. Plus 15x. But... We still have 175 here, so we minus 175, minus 175 equals, it's going to be gone, 15x is equal to 60. Then we divide by 15, we divide by 15. Therefore, x must be equal to 4. But that's not yet the answer because they're asking for the price. The x is only telling us that after 4 weeks, the prices of the beef and chicken will be equals. So next is we need to find the price, so you can just substitute it. On any of those two it will both work I would sub, uh, substitute on the first one because it's easier to multiply the uh, 0 0.25 by 4 so the price would be equals to 2.35 plus 0 0.25 times 4 4 times 0 0.25 is 1 plus 2.35 and that's 3.35 so the answer is D for number 12, it says here that um, it passes through the origin and the line has, in the, has a slope of 1 over 7. So I'm going to teach you two ways on how we can get the answer. But first, as you can see, we have an equation of a line which can be written in y is equal to mx plus b or c if that's what you're using. And since it passes through the origin, it means it has a y-intercept which is 0. That's why the equation now is y is equals to mx only, since this is going to be plus 0 and that's pointless to write. Next, the slope is 1 over 7, therefore the equation now is y is equivalent to 1 over 7x. So one way to do it is you just keep substituting the x here, and then check if you are going, if you will be able to get the y in here, so for, exa for example, for the first one, y is equals to 1 over 7, replace the x by 0, so y is equals to 0, but that is not 0, so it means it can't be the answer. You just keep on trying it until you finally get to d. So y is equivalent to 1 over 7, replace the x by 14, so 1 7 of 14, so you can multiply it, which is 14 over 7, which is equals to 2, and we get 2 as our y, therefore d is the answer. So that is one way to find the answer. This is another way to find the answer. So we're going to use the ratio. So since y is equals to 1 over 7x, I'm going to bring x to the other side. So it's going to be y over x must equivalent to 
1 over 7. So all you have to do is to try to put y over x and then check if it will simplify to 1 over 7. And if it does, then that's going to be our answer. So let's try our options. For the first one, y over 7 is 7 over 0, which is not going to work. And then this one, that's going to be 7 over 1, which is not 1 over 7. And the last one is 7 over 7, which is not 1 over 7. So by process of elimination, you can see that A, B, C are not going to work. We can try letter D, although we already know it's the answer. It's 2 over 14, which is equivalent to 1 over 7. And D is your answer. So you have two ways, so choose whichever will be uh, much simpler for you. So which of the following is equivalent to this expression? So this one over here is just like an indication that x is could be, I mean x is should be greater than 3, but for equations like this, you don't need to pay attention to that one. So let's just simplify it. So when you're simplifying, first we have 1 over, let's just simplify first the denominator. So if you want to simplify the denominator, it means that they must be added. So when you're adding them, it means we must have the same denominator. When you say the same denominator, it means the bottom part over here must be multiplied by x plus 3. Therefore, the upper part must also be multiplied by x plus 3. While the other side must be multiplied by x plus 2, this one must also be multiplied by x plus 2. So simplifying it, x plus 3 times 1, so x plus 3 over, this is now the complete denominator, plus for the other expression, we are going to have x plus 2 over x plus 2 bracket x plus 3. Since the denominators in here are now the same, we can now add their numerators. But first, copy the 1 all over, adding the numerator here is 2x plus 5 all over. This one, as you can see, all of them are expanded. So all you have to do is to expand it. And of course, it's obviously going to be this because there are no other options. So all you have to do is to expand them. You can expand them, but if you look at the options, that's going to be it x squared plus 5x plus 6. So some of you would probably jump to a conclusion that, oh, this is the answer. But it's not. Because we still have an existing one over here. And the reason there is one in there is for you to divide the fraction. And when you're dividing a fraction, you keep the first fraction, you change the division into multiplication, and then you flip. So it means keep the one, so it means one times... Because change means instead of division, we're going to be multiplying. And then it's going to be x squared plus 5x plus 6 all over 2x plus 5. So 1 in here is just like pointless. So the answer is B. Number 14. They gave us a value of 3x minus y is equivalent to 12. And they're asking for the value of this. So if you want to simplify an exponent, make sure that they have the same basis. So this 8 can actually convert it into 2, because 2 to the power of 3 is equivalent to 8. So what I'm doing in here is I'm just basically converting the 8 into 2 to the power of 3, and I'm going to copy everything. And the first rule is, if you have a power here and another power outside the bracket, you just multiply them. So it means 2 to the power of 3x over 2 to the power of y. And another rule is when you're dividing, you actually subtract the power. So you copy the same base, but the power must be subtracted. And 3x minus y actually has a value in here. The value is 12, therefore 2 to the power of 12. Number 15, all we have to do is to expand the expression on the left side. And we're going to compare it to the right side in order for us to find the value of c. So let's start. So ax times bx, I'm going to write my answer here on the left side. ax times bx is a b x squared. Then ax times 7 plus 7 ax. Then 2 times bx plus 2 bx 
times 7 plus 14. So we so as you can see over here, this one is actually equivalent to this. You can you can see that the 14 is equivalent to 14. Therefore, the one with x squared must be equivalent to 15 here. That's why a b x squared is equivalent to 15 x squared, which means a b is equivalent to 15. So that is what a and b are. And take note, there's another equation over here that says a plus b is equivalent to 8. You can do a simultaneous equation over here, but actually on this one, it's just a logic that a times b is equal to 15. So the first number that you will come into your mind will be 3 times 5, which is actually correct because 3 times 5 is 15 and it add up to 8. So a could be 3 and b could be 5. Actually, you can also reverse it. a is equal to b. I mean, a is equal to 5, b is equal to 3. But the expression is asking for c. The question is, what is c? So this is the c. <clears throat> this is c. And cx is actually equivalent to the combination of these two, which is combination of 7a plus 2 bx, sorry, 7ax. Since there is c over here, you can actually cancel all the x's. It means you multiply, I mean, divide them all by x's. So x, x, x. So c is equals to 7a plus 2b. All you have to do then is to replace a and b here by the numbers that we have found. So c is equals to 7. Let's go for the first value, 7 times 3 plus 2 times 5. So C is equivalent to 21 plus 10, which is 31. So if you look at the option, there's only one answer that has 31 on it. So it means that the answer is D. You don't need to do the other one. Although if you do it, you'll still get 41, but it's just going to be a waste of time. So go to the D and circle it, and that's going to be your answer. For number 16, they mentioned that D must be greater than 0. And we just need to find the value of t. So I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Number one is just normal equation by bringing 4 to the other side. So t squared is equals to 4. And t square root, square root is equivalent to plus and minus 2. When you square root a, var a number, you could actually get two values, one positive, one negative. But the question is only allowing us to have a greater than zero. That's why t must be equals to two only. We are gonna we are going to disregard the negative two. That's one one way to do it. The other way to do it is this: factorize this, which is t minus two, t plus two is equals to zero. And then since it is equivalent to zero, t minus two is equivalent to zero, and then t plus two is equivalent to zero. Therefore, t is equal to 2, t is equal to negative 2. Again, t must be greater than 0, so disregard that. And t equals to 2 is our answer. For this one, they said in here that there are two lakes, uh, there is a lake, and there are um, variables and numbers in here. So read all of it. And I'm just going to jump to the final conclusions. So the lens represented by this is determined by, so a, b, is 1,800 feet. So it means AB, where's AB? Here. So that is 1,800. And then EB is equivalent to 1,400. So EB is 1,400. And then BD is equivalent to 700 feet. BD is 700. And then lastly, we have CD, which is equivalent to 800. So CD is equivalent to 800. And the question is, what is the measure of X? So this is x over here. So we want to find that one. But look at the exa examples over here. They actually show that this angle over here is equivalent to this angle, the purple ones. And then the angle over here is equivalent to the angle here. Why? Because they are vertically opposite, so they are equals. Of course, the third angle will be equals to the other ones. So this one is equivalent to this one. So if all the angles of a triangle or just two angles are equal, 
it means they are mathematically similar. And then you can, if they are mathematically similar, it means you can find the, var the answers or the, uh, the sides by using ratios and proportion. So if you want to find x here, we can say that x over, and the counterpart of x is actually the 800 because it is in between the black angle and the purple angle. See, purple and black angle. So over 800 is equivalent to, since I started on the x side, I need to choose another side in here and I'm going to choose this 1400 because it has a counterpart. So 1400, which is in between the purple one and the green one, and I chose 1400 because there is a value for the purple one and the green one over here, which is over 700. So if you look at it, you can, um, you can cancel the zeros over here, or you can see that 700 into, four, into 1400 is basically times 2. So therefore, 800 must be 1600 over here, or 1600. Or you can just see it from the drawing itself. So this is the mathematical way to do it by computing it. But you can also look at the expression over here. So as you can see, 700 becomes 1400. So it means times 2. Therefore, 800 times 2 is 1600. According to the system of equations above, what is the value of x? Since you want to find the value of x, I would recommend you to eliminate y for a faster working out. And in order to eliminate y, all you have to do is to multiply the top part. I would multiply the top part by negative 2. Why negative 2? Because I want dy to be the same, and at the same time, one of them must be negative in order for me to just add them. So multiplying the top part by negative 2, it's going to be negative 2x minus 2y is equivalent to 18. So every single one will be multiplied by negative 2. Then just copy the other equation. Then we can now add the, numer uh, the top part and the, the bottom part. So adding them, these will cancel out. So negative 2x plus x is negative x is equivalent to 18 minus 25 or 18 plus negative 25 is negative 7. Therefore, x is equivalent to 7. For number 19, we can draw a right triangle and then we can figure it out. We can figure it out from there. So I'm going to teach you two ways. Number one is by drawing, and the other one is by using the facts in trigonometry. So this triangle is right, and then it says here that one of the angle is x. If one of the angle here is x, obviously the other angle over here is going to be 90 minus x. I'll show you why. So let's just say that green angle is the x. I mean, a missing angle, let's just say a green. So basically, the green angle plus the x plus 90 must all add up to 180 because all the angles in a triangle must add up to 180. So if you want to find the green angle, so you bring 90 to the other side and then x, so equals to 180 minus 90 minus x, and that's going to be 90 minus x. That's why this is 90 minus x. Or another theory is that this angle and that angle must always add up to 90 if the other angle is already 90 degrees. And then we are now going to put some labels on it. So for the first one over here, it says here that sine x is equivalent to 4 over 5. When you say sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it means sine x is equivalent to 4 over 5, that's the opposite and that's the hypotenuse. And in respect to our x, this is the opposite. So the opposite is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. And then they are asking for cosine 90 minus x. So it means we are now referring to this angle. And cosine is equivalent to adjacent over hypotenuse. In our case, this is the adjacent based on this 90 minus x, and that is the hypotenuse. So it means the answer is also 4 over 5. That is one way to do it. Another way to do it is this. But this one, you have to memorize it. Another way to do number 19 is this one. So I want you guys to make or to calculate. Use your calculator. This is for checking anyway. I want you to 
put any number in A in between 0 to 90, so maybe, for example, 10, example only. You can put any number you want, therefore sign 10. On the other hand, I want you to put, since this is 10, what will complete uh, the 90? So basically 90 minus 10, which is 80. So what I want you to do is use A and B that add up to 90, any number that you want, 20 and uh, 70, 50, 40, whatever number, and then put them both on your calculator. And you will notice that the answers are actually the same. So whatever numbers you get, I mean, whatever numbers you put here and here, as long as they add up to 90, you will always get the same number. Because it is a fact in a right triangle that sine A will always be equivalent to cosine B as long as A plus B is equivalent to 90. And in your case over here, since we have sine X and cosine 90 minus X, so therefore X plus 90 minus X, that actually add up to 90. That's why their values will be the same. So this is another technique, and the other one is by drawing. And last question, we want to find x. The equation for x is this, but we have a problem. We have an a, but a is available over here, so we just have to replace that a. So it means 2, pi by root 2, is equivalent to square root of 2x. So simplifying it, it's going to be 10 root 2 is equivalent to square root of 2x. Next, we square both sides. You square that one, you square this one. So this will be 2x, and then squaring this, I can put it here, 2 root 2, basically times 10 root 2. So 10 times 10, which is 10, I mean 100. Root 2 by root 2 is square root of 4, which is 2. So basically times 2, which is 200. And then we divide both sides by 2. So x is equivalent to 100. And that is for the paper uh, set 1, the first sample paper, which is the non-calculator. We're going to continue the set practice test number 1. And this is the calculator section. I already uploaded the section 3, which is the non-calculator. And this is the continuation for that one. So let's start. And let's start with number 1. So over here, it is asking us on which interval is the target heart rate is strictly increasing and then strictly decreasing. So let's check all the options and then check which one would work. So between 0 and 30 minutes, it means 0. 30 minutes so it means it is increasing in here and then the heart rate stays constant so it's not the uh, letter a secondly we have 40 to 60 so it goes up and then goes down so that is in strictly increasing and then decreasing so our answer is letter b next for number two it's mentioned in here that k is a constant and then given that y is 24 x is equal to 6 all you have to do is to substitute it on the given equation so it means y in here will be replaced as 24 is equivalent to k and x is 6 and then we divide both sides by 6 therefore k is equivalent to 4 and the next thing that we need to do is to replace the k by 4 since we already have it so 4x and then they are asking us to find y given that x is equal to 5 so y is equivalent to 4 times 5 so y is equivalent to 20 and there you go so the answer is letter c Above, L and M are parallel and S and T are parallel. So we have two pairs of parallel lines. So it is actually a uh, parallelogram. And then they give us the measurement of angle 1, which is 35. So that is 35 degrees. What is the measurement of angle 2? For this one, there are so many ways to find it. And I'll start with, this is 35. Therefore, this one over here is 35 because they are corresponding angles. And then, if that is 35, this is also 35, because these two are also corresponding angles. And therefore, line number 2, this line, over, I mean this angle over here and that angle has to add up to 180, since they, they, uh, they make a straight line. So therefore, our answer would be 180 minus 35, and the answer would be 145. If 16 plus 40, 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? So it means 16 plus 4x, it is actually not equal to 14. Because it says here that this one is 10 more than compared to 14. So basically this one is a little bit higher and this is a little bit lower. So in order to maintain the balance, 
all you have to do is to add 10 on this side. Since this one is higher by, by 13, I uh, by 10, sorry, therefore you need to add 10 on the other side to maintain the balance in order for us to be able to write equal sign over here. And then all we have to do now is to find the value of x and then we can find AX, uh, 8x. So for, uh, we can copy this one over here, which is 16, plus 4x is equivalent to 24. We can bring 16 to the other side. 4x is equivalent to 24 minus 16, which is 8. And then actually, since we want to find 8x, you can just times this by 2, and that will turn into 8x. Therefore, times this by 2, and we are going to get an answer of 16. The following graph best shows a strong negative association between D and T. So when you say strong negative association, let's start with negative. Negative means it's going down from left to right, so it means the graph should look like that. And this is actually going down, so it means it has negative. But the question is, is it strong? So let's check the other options. So there's a possibility that A could be an answer, a possibility. B, it's more like a, con a constant. C, it's positive because it is increasing, while D, it's also negative, and this one is much stronger compared to A, because the data or the points are closer to each other compared to letter A. So our answer would be letter D. So all we have to do is to find out how many grams do we have in a decagram. So we have a decagram over, he over here, and we want to convert it into milligrams. So how many milligrams do we have in two decagrams? First, one decagram is equivalent to 10 grams. So if we have two decagrams, therefore, that would be equivalent to 20 grams. And then, every gram is actually equivalent to 1,000 milligrams. If you have 20 grams, if one gram is equivalent to 1,000 milligrams, therefore, 20 grams is 20,000 milligrams. And there you go. Rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities are shown in the graph above. So this one represents the number of installation of the uh, solar panel. And for example, for letter A, there are actually nine installations. So I'm going to put nine in here. For letter B, there's five. For letter C, there's six. For letter D, there's four. And then for letter E, there is in between four and three. So that's 3.5. If we add all of these together, we are going to get an answer of, uh, sorry, I forgot the 4 over here. We're going to get an answer of 27.5. It means 27.5 in total. And it says here that there is a total of 27,500. So all you have to do is to divide 27,500 by 27.5. And that is in terms of thousands. So it means every line in here means that is in thousands. That's why our answer would be letter C. For what value of n is this equation equivalent to 0? So n minus 1 plus 1, absolute value in here, will be equal to 0. So what value of n? There will be no solution. Because in, in absolute value, the lowest possible answer that you could get is 0. There's no way that you're going to get a negative because absolute value means you make everything inside positive. For example, you have negative 7 in an absolute value, the answer will be 7. So there's no way that this will turn into any negative number. And then plus 1, so basically the minimum value that you could get is 1. So there's no way that you can get a negative number. That's why there is no such value for n. Statements over here is pertaining for number 9 and number 10. So for number 9, even without looking or reading this, I can actually say that they just want me to find t. So all I have to do is to rearrange the equation over here to find t. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to bring 1052 to the other side. So it's going to be a minus 1052 is equivalent to 1.08t. And then we divide both sides by 1.08. So divide by 1.08. And the answer will be letter A. So for number 10, at which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound wave be closest to 1,000? So it means A will be equivalent to 1,000. 
it is mentioned in here that A is the speed of sound wave. And then all we have to do is to find out what temperature uh, is closest to that one. So all you have to do is to use your answer on number, uh, number 9, which is A. So the temperature will be equivalent to 1000 minus 1052 divided by 1.08. So let's just put it on the calculator. And the answer is negative 48.148, which is closest to our B. So number 10, the answer would be B. Following numbers is not a solution of the inequality. So there's one technique in here where you can just keep on substituting the values in here. So it means, for example, negative 1. Try to replace excess by negative 1. So 3 by negative 1 minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4 times negative 1 minus 3. And then negative 3, negative 5, greater or less than. So I'm just evaluating them individually. And then negative 8 is greater than negative 7. So when you say negative 8 is greater than negative 7, that is actually false. Because negative 8 is much lower than negative 7. So by just looking at it, since it doesn't satisfy our equation, it means that negative 1 is not a solution. So this is one way to do it. And then another way is we're going to solve it, and then we're going to check our answer. So I'm going to show you that one. So for the other option, all we have to do is to solve the inequality. So first, I'm going to have to bring 4x to this side. Or much better, I'm going to bring 3x to the other side in order to maintain the x being positive. So negative 5, and then 4x, I'm going to bring 3x here, so it, which means minus 3x greater than or less than x because 4x minus 3x minus 3. And then we're going to bring 3 to the other side. So that's going to be negative 2 so less than, greater than or equal to x. So if you read this one, it means x must be less than or uh, equal to negative 2. And that is good because that is less than negative 2 or that is equal to negative 2. This is less, that is less. And this one is the only one that is not a solution. So those are the two ways. Number one is plug in. You can just trial and error, substitute the values, or the other one is solve it. So we, in here, we need to find the arithmetic mean, given that this is the uh, frequency or the number of apples, and this is the number of seeds. So this one over here, the interpretation for this uh, graph or bar, which uh, it means that there are two apples that has three seeds. So basically, if we're going to write the data, it will look like this, three and three, because one apple, second apple, which has three seeds. If we're going to continue, there are um, four apples that has five seeds. So it means five, 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 five. That is literally what it means. But there is a shorter way to find all of it. Because arithmetic means, it means all you have to do is to add all of this and then divided by the total number of apples, which is written in here. There are 12 apples. So we divide it by 12 later on. But there is a shorter way. So this is just like the idea. The shorter way is just multiply 2 and 3, so 6. 4 and 5, 20. 6 by 1, so 6. 7 by 2, so that's 14. 9 by 3, 27. Add all of these and then divide by 12 because we have 12 apples and we should be able to get one of these numbers. So let's try to put it on the calculator. So I got 6.08 and the closest mean would be 6. So read all of this information, but I'm just going to go to the last sentence. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all the surveyed correspondence? And then the total correspondence is 310. So all I have to do is to do 310 times 19% or 310 times 0 0.19 or 310 times 19 over 100. Choose whatever is the one that you usually use. And then let's get the value on our calculator. So I've got 58.9. So all I have to do is to look for something that is closer to 58.9 and that is the 59. And that is basically the one who's taking geometry and male. So male taking geometry. So that's why 13 is C. They're just asking us which one of these will change uh, the most if the 24 inch in here is removed. So let's analyze all of them. Let's start with the mean. When you say mean, it means you're going to add all of this data. You can do that and then divide it by how many data we have in here. 
so which is we have 21 data so add all of them and then divide it by 21 and then after that take the 24 out and then do the same thing and then find out how much is the change for it but actually it takes some time so let's just analyze all the information of course the mean will change for a bit it will only change for a bit because the numbers are pretty much close to each other anyways the median when you say median it means you cross end to end until you find the middle number and even if you take 24 out the mid the median will be somewhere around here and that will not change that much but the range will actually change the most because originally if 24 is in our data the range would be 24 minus 8 because that's the highest minus the lowest which is 16 but then if you take that out the maximum now is 16 minus 8 and that is a big change from 16 to 8 that is a big change so our answer would be letter c total cost of renting a boat by the hour is given by this graph over here the question is what does the c intercept when you say c intercept basically it's this if you look at it the time is zero but you already have to you need to pay for five and that is what we call the initial it means you haven't used the boat yet but you have to pay for it immediately this is the fixed cost the starting the y intercept and that is the initial thing represents the relationship between h and c so for this one if you want to find out the cost first of all is we have discussed that there is a y intercept over here which is five so there should be a y intercept on our answer that's why d and a are eliminated therefore we are only left with b and c options so the, the next thing that we're going to have to find is the slope. And slope, you can actually find it by using the rise over the run. So let's just say I start here. So it means I'm going to go up by 3. Because from 5, 6, 7, and 8. So it means I'm going to go up by 3. And then from here, I'm going to jump to the next point, which is actually 1 step. See, from here to here, it's 1. So 3 over 1, which is 3. So the slope is 3. And the answer will be C. Chan, they're asking us for what value of x is the function of x at its minimum. When you say minimum, the lowest part of the graph, and that is this point. If you take the coordinates of that point, that is 1, 2, 3. So that is negative 3, comma. And the lowest point, which is we don't care anymore, but let's get it, which is negative 2. Since they're asking for x, the x for that is negative 3. On this one, 0, 0 is a solution. And we need to find out the relationship between a and b. So if 0, 0 is a solution, it means you can replace x and y by 0. Let's start on the first one. So it's going to be 0 is less than negative 0 plus a. Simplifying it, 0 is less than a. So that is a. Next for b, 0 and 0 again. So 0 is greater than 0 plus b. Therefore, 0 is greater than b. As you can see here, a is bigger than 0, it means it should be a positive number, and B is less than 0, so it should be a negative number. Therefore, A must be greater than B. Question. Um, we have a food, a food truck sells salads for 6.50 each and a drink which is $2 each. So if you're going to make, to make an equation in the relationship of the salad and the drink based on their prices, therefore 6.50 for every salad, plus two for every drink and the total revenue that they got is 836.50 so that is our first equation which is based on the revenue and then it says here that we have 209 salads and drinks in one day it means the total salads plus the total drinks is equivalent to 209 this one is what we call the simultaneous equation and most of our calculators can calculate this all you have to do is to go on YouTube and search for the model of your calculator and then type simultaneous equation. Because if you know how to use your calculator for this, it will save you a lot of time. Our calculator can solve it in like 5 seconds, depending on how fast you can write all the data. Or you can solve this manually and I can show it to you how we can solve it by hand, but it will take a little bit of time. So let's continue solving it. And for this one, since they want salads, we're going to eliminate D. So we're going to eliminate D over here. 
So I'm going to make them equal. So it means the bottom part must be multiplied by negative 2. So I will copy the first part over here. So let's copy it. So which is 6.50 S plus 2D is equivalent to 836.50. The bottom part will be multiplied by negative 2. So negative 2S minus minus 2D is equivalent to negative 2 times 209 is equivalent to 418. And then, this is the reason why I choose negative 2. Because I can just add the top and bottom and these two will be eliminated. So just add them. You may use your calculator. So 4.50s is equals to Let's use our calculator for this, which is 418.5. And then, since we want to find out the salad, we divide both sides by 4.50, divide by 4.50, and you will get 93. So if you solve this by hand and with a little bit of a calculator, it will take some time. But if you can just figure out how to do this, on your calculator, there's, there are um, techniques in there. The calculator can solve simultaneous equation. Then it will save you a lot of time that you can use to some other questions. Alma bought a laptop or a computer and then she received 20% discount of its original price. And the total amount uh, cashier was paid was P dollars, including 8% sales tax. So let's just say the original price is X. Since you got a discount of 20%, you have to multiply it by 80% or 0 0.8. Why do we need to multiply it by 0 0.8? Because out of 100%, you don't need to pay the full amount. Since you have a 20% discount, you only have to pay for 80%. And 80% in decimal is 0 0.80 or 0 0.8. That's the shortcut to find out the discounted price. But there is a sales tax which is 8% increase. So it means whatever amount you pay, it will be increased by 8%. And that is 100% plus an increase of 8%, which is 108% or 1.08. And that will be equal to the new price, which is P. But the question in here is, which of the following represents the original price? So we want to find X. If you want to find X, all you have to do is to divide both sides by 0 0.8 and then 1.08. And you will get the original price, which is P. 21. You read all of this, but I'm just going to go to the last sentence. If a person is chosen at a random from those who recalled at least one dream. So the people who recalled at least one dream are basically starting from here up to here. So the total of them is 39 and 125, which is 164. So it means our option is only out of 164 people. And if you look at the options over here, there's only one answer. That's automatically the answer, so you don't need to continue. But let's continue. For this one, they want you to find out the person. So um, if a person is chosen at a random from those who recalled at least one dream, what is the probability that that person belonged to group Y? So group Y... These are the people who belong to the group Y, which is still under the, the one who has more than one dream. 11 plus 68, which is 79, that's the answer. Following best approximates the average rate of change in annual budget for agricultural and natural resources for 2008 and 2010. 2008 and 2010. If you want to find out the rate of change, all you have to do is to find out the difference. So basically, 488,106 less by 358,708 and use your calculator for that. Once you, get, once you get the answer, all you have to do is to divide it by two years because from 2008 to 2010, two years have passed. So whatever answer that you've got, which is in my case, I got 129,398 divided by two and you will get an answer of 64,000 699, which is close to 65,000 per year. But the question is, my calculator is giving me 65,000 approximately. 
but the option here is in millions because these data are actually in thousands of dollars. What does that mean? It means the numbers in here times them by a thousand. That's why our answer times by a thousand will be 65 million approximately. The following, which of the, ra uh, which of the following ratios is closest to the human resources? ratio of 2007 to 2010. All you have to do is to this number over here, just divide it by this number over here. And let's get the answer. Approximately, the answer is 0 0.68. So all you have to do is to keep trying A, B, C, and D until you find out the answer, which one is closest to 0 0.68. So let's try one, uh, one by one, all of them. Let's start with agricultural and natural resources. So this divided by that, I've got an answer of 0 0.76. So I'm gonna try the education now. So the education is this divided by this one. So approximately 0 0.72. I'm gonna try the highway and transportation. So highway and transportation, which is this to this one, which is 0 0.83. So if you look at it, all of them are uh, far from 0 0.68, but so you can actually choose D, but let's check it to, to make sure that our answer is correct. Let's check public safety. Maybe it's education. We don't know. So let's try public safety. And that is this divided by that one. And it turned out that this is 0 0.57. So the closest answer will be education, which is 0 0.72. 24 they're asking for an equation of a circle with this center and this is the end point uh, from a uh, radius what do we mean by that so basically this is our circle and the zero zero four is here and this four over three and then five is somewhere along the circle I don't know exactly where it is but it's somewhere along here basically if you connect those two we can form a radius Next, an equation of a circle could be written in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equivalent to r squared, where h and k is basically the center and r is obviously the radius. Since we know our center, which is 0, 4, we can just substitute it uh, in our h and k, so x minus 0 squared plus y minus 4 square is equivalent to r squared. So simplifying x minus 0 is just x. x squared plus y minus 4 squared is equivalent to r squared. So by just looking with this outcome for now, we can determine that b can't be an answer because we need minus in here. This one can't be an answer because we need minuses. So basically, c and a are the only ones that are possible answers. So if you look at the options, one of them is 5 over 3, and one of them is 25 over 9. This is actually made to trick us, because R is possibly the radius, but most of the students will choose this when they see the R, but actually we want the R squared. And if you look at this one over here, if you look at that one, you can see that that is the 5 over 3 squared. If you square the radius, which is 25 over 9. So by just, for example, you're running out of time, then A will be our answer. But if you want to make sure if this is really the answer, we need to find the radius using the distance formula. So let's do that. So again, D can't be an answer, B can't be an answer, so we're only left with A or C. So if you want to find the distance between two points, we need to use the distance formula. And distance is equivalent to the square root of y sub 2 minus y sub 1 plus, that squared, x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared. So let's just substitute. So y sub 2, so by the way, it could be switched, but I'm just going to use 4, minus 5 squared plus, since I started with 4, I should start with its partner 0. So 0 minus 4 over 3 squared. And then calculate this and you'll get the r. 
So I found the answer which is 5 over 3. And take note that we want to put in here is the r squared. So if we square this and we square that, therefore r squared is equivalent to 5 over, I'm sorry, 5 over 3 squared, which is 25 over 9. That's why our answer is letter A. As you can see, it took some time and probably some of us doesn't know how to do the distance formula. So we can analyze based on our options. On this question, we are, we are being asked about the approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground. So a ball is launched upward from the ground and then they mentioned 25 meters. Don't worry about this. It's actually here. So they just explaining or describing the equation. So a ball was launched just like up, down. It was launched like that. And then they're asking on the times where it will hit the ground or how long before it hits the ground. So if you want to find out how long the graph, I mean the ball hits the ground, all you have to do is to find the x intercepts. And in order to find that, you could do factorizing if it's possible. You could do quadratic formula or you could use your calculator because calculator is allowed in here and most calculator can calculate stuff like this. And I recommend that to save some time. By the way, how did I know that the graph is like this? Number one, it's a quadratic, so it's a parabola. It's, e it's, either, uh, it's either up or down. The fact that there's a negative over here, I figured out that it's going to be a downward graph. So that's how I could sketch the graph. So all we, need, all we need to do now is to find the x intercepts. So I'm just going to do it manually for now. And you can actually do it on calculator. And for that one, you need to, uh, to find out on Google or on YouTube on how to use your calculator. Or you could use quadratic formula and some other calculations that are quadratic. So in order for us to uh, factorize this, I'm going to use a factorizing technique. So I'm going to do it manually. As you can see here, there's a common factor t. So I can take t outside. So negative 4.9t plus 25. And earlier I told you that this is going to be a quadratic where we want to find the x-intercept. So it means the y has to turn into 0 or the height must be 0. Why 0? Because if the height is 0, it means it's already on the ground. And then we just solve it. t e is equal to 0. Every factor is equivalent to 0. Another factor is this. This is one factor, which is negative 4.9t plus 25 is equivalent to 0. So solving it, bring 25 to the other side. So negative 4.9 equals to negative 25. And then we divide both sides by negative 4.9. Negative 4.9, so t is equals to so approximately 5.1 or 5.0 based on our options here. So the ball leaves the ground when the t is 0. So as you can see here, it left the ground when t is 0. And then it goes back down. So basically, it started here when the time is 0. It goes up, it goes down at five seconds so it took it five seconds to hit the ball uh, to hit the ground Rina is a botany studying the production of the pairs of two types she noticed that um, type a trees produce 20 percent more than type b so let's just say we have two types of pairs a and b it is mentioned in here that type a produces produces 20 percent more uh, compared to type b let's just say type b then is producing x Therefore, type A is producing 1.2x. So if you are wondering what is 1.2x, so basically try it. For example, 100, find a 10% increase. So most of us, we will find um, 100 times 10%, which is 10, and then we add it to our 100. So basically the new number would be 110. But for the ones who know uh, percentage, you're going to go straight. You'll do 100 times, 110%, and you will get this answer immediately. And in order to, uh, to calculate 110 over here into decimal, it's basically divided by 100, so that's going to be 1.1. So that's how I found 1.2.
So again, since A is producing 20% more compared to uh, uh, type B trees, that's why 1.2 times X, that means 20% uh, more than the X. So it is also mentioned here that if type A trees produce 144, so therefore 1.2 X is equivalent to 144. So if we want to find X, we divide both sides by 1.2. Therefore, x is equivalent to 120. So, type B produces 120 uh, roots. So, on this question, number 27, there is a field which is 10 by 10 meters. So, if we draw it, it will look like this. 10 by 10, and then there's just like... Therefore, there are hundreds of these small squares in here, which is 1 by 1. And then students, 10 random students, chose a uh, different area in here, and then they counted the number of earthworms, and this is what they've got. If we add all of it, it will approximately be 1,500. But this one only represents 10 parts of this. So if you want to find the entire field, since this is 100, all you have to do is to times it by 10. So approximately times 1,500 by 10, and you'll get 15,000 as our answer. 28, they want us to find out which quadrant contains no solution. So when you see no solution, it's, it is not going to be shaded. So let's uh, graph them one by one. Let's start with this one, at least a red pen for it. So when you're graphing, it, it composes of two parts, the slope and the y-intercept. And if you look at it, the y-intercept is this. So approximately the y-intercept is here, 1. And since the slope is positive, we can assume that the graph is increasing like this. Next, since we have a y greater than, we can actually shade the upper part. Because that's what greater than means. Or if you don't know whether which one to shade, I would recommend you to choose a point, and that point would be 0, 0. So for example, look at this point over here. That is 0, 0. All you have to do is to replace it on our equation. So I'll show you. For example, since y is 0, 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 plus 1. Therefore, 0 is greater than that 0 plus 1, so which is 1. And that is incorrect because 0 is not greater than 1. So it means the purple one must not be shaded. So it means you're going to shade the upper part. So that is another way to do it. Next, let's use a green one for the other drawing. So we have this line. Again, the y-intercept is 1. I mean, negative 1. So it means we're going to, that's why it intercept negative 1. So we go here and negative 1. And then we have a slope of positive. So by the way, earlier it was 2 because we had a slope of 2 over 1 here. That's why I did 1, 2, and then 1 to the right. But this time, we have 1 over 2. It means go up by 1 and then go right by 2. So that's how the graph looks like. And again, if you do the testing again that I showed you earlier, you can uh, choose the 0, 0. So I'll choose the 0, 0 again. So the point 0, 0 is here. 0, 0. I'm going to put it on the equation. So 0 is greater than 1 half of 0 is still 0, negative 1. Now ask yourself, is 0 greater than negative 1? That is true. Therefore, you need to shade that purple one. So it means our solution will be everything on top. Now you'll notice something that they only meet on this part. Basically, the lines met on this part. So that is obviously, there is no solution for quadrant 4. So letter C. 29, guys. This is a lesson about a remain remainder theorem. So I would recommend you to just go on YouTube and search for this lesson because this lesson is a little bit long if I give some examples in here. Because in, in summary, this is the summary. If the px is divided by a polynomial, let's just say any polynomial or a binomial, and if you, you're only concerned about the remainder, for example, you just want to know the remainder, you don't need to do all of this long division. So all you have to do is to do a shortcut, and that shortcut would be that px. Since you have 3 in here, it means the px was actually divided by x minus 3. So instead of dividing it, we just use the 3 in here, 
substitute it and then if whatever number we get in here that will serve as the remainder so that is the remainder when px is divided by x minus 3 so negative 2 so the lesson is very long and i don't want to uh, use a lot of time to explain this just look for that lesson online so remainder theorem for number 30 they're just asking which one on this equation shows the vertex first of all the vertex is this if you look at this one let's zoom it in the vertex is 1 comma for the x value i mean for the y value it's actually right below 15 so approximately maybe 16 17 so around 16 or 17 so all you have to do is to look at the options and look for the numbers that shows 1 and 16 or 1 and 17 because we're not we're uncertain whether this is 16 or 17 but if you look at letter d that's the only possible answer so that is our answer so this is how you get the answer immediately without even solving but the proper way to do it is this one. Since they're asking on which equation over here is um, expressing the vertex from which of the vertex A can be identified. So it means by just looking at it, you'll eventually know that it's a vertex. Basically, if the equation is written into this form, which is what we called the vertex form, and there, there's only one option for that, and that's still letter D. So the previous um, explanation was is to make it shorter to get the answer immediately. But if you want to understand it deeper, then use the vertex formula over here. At least 12 dozens of corn per hour. So 12 per hour, or sometimes, at most, it's 8 per hour. So of course, uh, when we do something, we're not consistent. Sometimes we are a little bit lazy, we're a little bit faster, and that's the case in here. And then it's the question in here is what it what it uh, what could take Wyatt to husk seventy two dozens of uh, corn? So all you have to do is to find out how much is the the fastest time. So the fastest time would be seventy two divided by eighteen, and that will give us four hours. It means if he's maybe rushing in, he want to finish the job faster, he'll do it in four hours or if he doesn't feel like working, then 72 divided by 12, which is 6 hours. So basically, he can finish 72 corns in between 4 to 6 hours. Your answer could be 4, 5, 6, or it could be 4.1, 4.2, because there's so many possibilities. That's why they're asking in here, what is a possible amount of time in hours? But safer to write 4, 5, and 6 because they are whole numbers. But any number in between 4 to 6, inclusive of those, is a solution. Posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000. A delivery truck that is carrying X identical boxes, so basically it's carrying X identical boxes, which uh, weighs 14 pounds each. So if you want to find out the, uh, the weight of it, it's just 14x plus the driver and the truck is 4,500 pounds. So plus 4,500. And then the question in here, in here is, what is the maximum possible value for x? So in order for them to still pass the bridge and they are not uh, above the posted limit. So it means they should be less than or equal to 6,000 limit. And then we just find x. So minus 4,500 in here, minus 4,500, so 14x is equal, I mean, less than or equal to 1,500. Then we divide both sides by 14, we divide by 14, and we, found, we find x, which is, and the x is less than or equal to 107.14. And of course, we want an exact number of boxes, so that should be 107. So maximum, the truck can carry up to 107 boxes. For this one, according to the line graph above, um, the number of the portable media players sold in 2008, so 2008 here, so that is the number, is what fraction 
of the number of sold in 2011. So when you say fraction, so basically 2008 over 2011. So that's going to be 100 divided by the 2011, which is 160. So 100 out of 160, we just simplify it, and that's going to be 10 over 16. Simplify further, 5 over 8. So 5 over 8 is the answer. Or you can get the decimal value. And I would recommend you guys to use calculator if you're having trouble on simplifying to save some time. Television station sells a time slots program for a 30-minute interval. If the uh, station operates 24 hours per day, so if they are working 24 hours per day, 24-7, therefore, every single day, they can cater 24 times to number of shows. So that will be 48 for every single day. Why again? Why two? Because it says here that the slot programs run for 30 minutes. So basically for every one hour, you can have two TV shows, maybe a Kardashians or a Gordon Ramsay, whatever you're watching, Friends or whatever. So that's why 24 times two. So 48 every day. The question is, what is the total number of 30 minute time slot station that can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday. So how many days is that? One day, two days. So times by two. So 96 shows. So if you, you don't want to sleep for two days and want to watch a TV, watch TV, then you'll be able to watch 96 TV shows. This is the storage and they're asking for the diameter. They give us the volume, which is 72 pi. We have the height. All we need to do is to find the diameter. Take note that we have the formula, guys. The formula is in here. For the volume of a cylinder, you don't need to memorize it. It's available. It's pi r squared h. So let's go back. So the formula for the volume is equivalent to pi r squared h. And we have the volume given 72 pi is equals to pi. And the radius is unknown. And the height is given as 8. So simplifying it, we want to find we want to find the r first. So we divide both sides by 8 pi to get the 8 and pi out. Divide by 8 pi, cancel. So 72 divided by 8, which is 9. So r squared is equals to 9. And then square root, square root. Therefore, r is equals to 3. But do not, uh, do not get so excited because we're not looking for r. We're looking for the diameter, which is 2 times the r. R is only this part, so 3. But then they're asking for the diameter, which is 6. 36. For what value of x is the function h above? Undefined. When you say undefined, it means that the whole denominator will basically equal to 0. So all we need to do is to equate the denominator into 0. So there's a shortcut in here, and this is the shortcut. Look at this x minus 5 and x minus 5. Let's just say a or let a is equivalent to x minus 5. So if we rewrite the equation, it's going to be a squared plus 4a plus 4 is equivalent to 0. Factorizing it, a plus 2, a plus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, a must be equal to negative 2. a must be equal to negative 2. But that's not the answer because a is actually x minus 5. Therefore, x minus 5 must equal to, so basically we are just replacing this a by x minus 5 equals to negative 2, and x must be equal to 3. So that is the answer in here. That is the shortcut. I'm going to do the long, the long way now. The one that we did earlier is the shortcut. That is for the advanced students. But for those who struggled understanding it, we can just do it the long way. So again, we equate it to 0. So expand this, which is x minus 5 times x minus 5. We can expand this, which is, I'll just rewrite them all first. Plus 4 expanding this, so you just do the FOIL method. And you'll get x squared minus 10x plus 25. Plus distribute this one, 4x minus 20 plus 4. Simplifying further, combining like terms, 10x and 4x over here, so that will give us negative 6. x squared minus 6x, 25 minus 20 is 5 plus 4 is 9. Plus 9 is equal to 0. And then again, factorizing it, it's going to be x minus 3. x minus 3 equals to 0. 
therefore x is equal to 3. You'll get the same answer, but as you can see, it's a little bit longer. So this one is for the ones who struggled understanding the shortcut. So this is going to be the long way. Jessica opened a bank account for 2%, so it means 100 is the original amount of money that he, uh, she invested. So 2% inc uh, increase or percentage or rate is actually times 102% to the power of t. The question is, what is the value of x? And x is this. So 102%, you can just put it on the calculator, it's going to be 1.02. So 100 times 1.02. So that is the x. Question. Jessica's friend, Taishan, found an account that earns 2.5% interest, the same compounded annually, and he also made the initial deposit of 100. And the question is, um, they both, and Jessica, of course, she's already here at number 37. They waited for 10 years. The question is, how much more money will Taishan's initial deposit have earned compared to Jessica? So let's go for Jessica. For Jessica, it will be 100 times 1.02 to the power of 10. So you can calculate this individually. So let's just calculate for Jessica first. So 100 times 1.02 to the power of 10. And I've got an answer of 121 point. So over, over here, guys, as you can see, the answer is 121.89944. I would recommend you to at least write four decimals for now. Don't round off. In order for our answer to be more accurate later on. Let's, let's continue. For Taishan, it's going to be the same thing. The only difference is Taishan has a 1.025 because of 2.5%. Uh, so calculating it. Use your calculator, you can just add it, you can just add 5, and he will have 128.00845. The question is, how much money will Taishan have more compared to Jessica to the nearest cent? By the way, when you say cent, it means two decimal places. So it means that our answer recently minus Jessica's, and we will get the difference. So minus Jessica's 121.8994. So to the nearest two decimal places, I've got on my calculator 6.10905, but I only need cent, so I'm going to cut it off here, which is 6.11. And that is the answer for number 38. So that's it for SAT practice test number one. And hope to see you guys again on... Paper 2.